This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. We got Bob Holt finally with us today. Bob, vacation. What? How was it, man? What you up to? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I was visiting some friends in the Lexington area. You know, I've been there for work a lot, but um, hadn't been there just to, you know, uh, on vacation. There's a lot of stuff to do in the area, so it was, it was a nice time. We were uh, Phil, Phil and his uh, his family was on vacation. They were doing a little fishing, so we were kind of seeing what kind of activities. What what kind of activities Bob Holt do on on vacation? Well, in this instance, um, I went to the Louisville Slugger Museum one day. I've nice. never I've been to Louisville, but never did that. That was pretty cool. And, and within I don't know about three blocks, they have the Muhammad Ali Center, which is basically a museum devoted to him. So you can knock those two out, you know, going to Louisville. And I went to a horse, like a third, and uh, several horses that had won triple crown races, got to feed them some carrots and pet them if they were so obliged, like Silver Charm, Touch Gold, um, Grind, or Birdstone, I should say, um, uh, Lava Man, if people know horses, they've probably heard of those horses, um, that, that, that was fun. Just just got to see some friends, and um, I went over to the Frankfurt and to look at the Capitol, and I got to sit in the governor's office because he was gone. <laughs> to let people do that, so that was kind of funny. And just been really enjoyed. It's beautiful scenery there with the horse farms and just driving around, and it was just fun to go there and not have to work, you know. Absolutely. I always say that Kentucky game uh, whenever I was, uh, I believe I was a junior, and uh, that was the, the best field I ever played on in college. And, and now Kentucky has field turf. They don't even have grass, but the Bluegrass State, uh, it's, it's very surprising. Bob, have you seen any of this summer league ball, ball and, and seeing Jordan Walsh go off? What are you thinking as Razorback fans? Do we think we kind of missed out on one, seeing Nick Smith and seeing Anthony Black all kind of just doing their thing in the summer league? Yeah, I've watched some of the summer league games. I mean, there's not a ton of stuff going on, especially during the All-Star break. There's no baseball for a few days. Yeah, I watched Orlando play last night and saw Anthony Black play. And um, I think it was Adis Tony's playing for him some, too, and I saw Walsh play. And they've got, like, four games on every night. But, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously Nick Smith was never really fully healthy and, you know, fully sharp as he would have been if he had missed all that time and you saw him go off for 33 the other night. I guess it's the summer league. They're not not the playoffs, but still, I think that gives uh, people a taste for what he's capable of doing. And, and yeah, if he could have had a healthy Nick Smith all year and a healthy Trevor Brazil, I mean, who knows what Arkansas might have done. But maybe the Sweet 16 would have still been the extent of what they could do. But I thought they, they rallied late, had a, had a strong finish to the season. Anthony Black, obviously, was one of the best all-around players in the country. That's reflected by him being picked so high, and I think people understand the potential Nick Smith has, and that's why he was still a first-round pick. And, and Jordan Walsh was the top 38 pick, even though his stats weren't eye-popping, but, you know, he can play defense and rebound, and he scored pretty well the other night. I know from reading some stories, he really worked hard on his jump shot, and so, um, yeah, people can wonder what if, if all those guys had been on top of their games and healthy, but um, that's one thing that in this day and age you get the one and done guys you don't get to enjoy them real long at the college level <laughs> because they're gone pretty quick Bob with the on vacation deal that's not so I think the reason why Phil Elson has you on this show this is Clay by the way um, yeah, um, y'all are cat people so what happens to the cats when Bob Holt is gone for like 10 days or whatever well, I have, I have somebody check, check on them. Um, fortunately, that down, down to one cat now. But um, yeah, I have a, a friend who comes in and checks checks on him every day. Checks on freehand now every day and make sure he gets his wet food and has all his water and get get, get some attention. Has clean litter. And cats are very they like their litter boxes clean. I guess just like people like their bathrooms clean, right? So um, yeah, I, I'm not one of these people that like just leaves the cat alone for a week or some. I mean, they, they'd probably survive, but I don't think that that's very good for them. So, do you think cat people and dog people are different? I don't know. I mean, I, I like both animals. Uh, the reason I have cats 
Well, we always had cats when I was growing up. One, my mom really liked cats. My dad, honestly, did not care for them that much. I didn't realize that when I was a kid. But, you know, from from the standpoint of just, you know, traveling, you know, a lot, cats are, are very, you know, they're, 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 they don't have to go outside three times a day or whatever dogs they need to. They don't need to be walked. Or some people sometimes will get up you know, a harness or whatever for a cat and take him for a walk. I don't know how Mike, I don't think Fran would like that very much. Oh, he gets outside every once in a while by mistake, but... Your, your um, cat I, I is named Freehand? A, yeah, it's named after Bill Freehand, the great Tigers catcher. I like to name him after baseball players. That's pretty okay. cool, Bob. We All were right. We were talking about kind of, uh, you know, jersey numbers and stuff like that, and, and Bob Holtz, so like jersey numbers... Uh, you wouldn't just call him seven like Mickey Mantle. You know, you got to have, you actually call him the name. Yeah. Yeah, but Bill Freeman, I don't know why I remember this. His, his number was 11. Um, and Mickey Rolich, who's a great pitcher, was number 29. He's the guy that won three games against the Cardinals in 68 series when I was a, a little kid, and I still remember that. That's pretty cool. Uh, so, so what were the names of your other cats? Well, I had a cat named K-Line for Al K-Line. I had a Whitaker. Who uh, she lived to be almost twenty. She was named for Lou Whitaker. Um, well, she'd be in the Hall of Fame. So um, those, I mean, there's a lot of great tigers. Freehand, he, I think he, I got him as a kitten at the shelter. I don't think he's a purebred, but he's a Maine Coon, and he's definitely part Maine Coon. I don't know how much, but he's very big. He got to be as big as twenty five pounds, which is pretty big for a cat. Now I think he's more like twenty one. Um, but I should name him Lowledge because Mickey Lowledge was a great left-hander, but he was kind of known for being portly. So he I probably should portly. name Freehand Low- Lowledge. Hmm? Yep. My brother and his wife have, have a, had a cat for, I think, 26 years. And wow. And they decided to name name that cat. had something to do with hockey, and it was Lord Stanley. Oh, well, that's a nice name. If I did that, I'd probably name, name mine G- Gordy Howe for the Red Wings. <laughs> yeah, Lord Stanley. After the cup, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, I think that's the oldest trophy in North America, or something yeah. like that. Bob, are are you excited for SEC Media Days? Will you go? Are you attending SEC Media Days? Yeah, me, me, Will, and Tom are all going to go on Sunday. It's going to be in Nashville for the first time. Yeah, that, that's always a, a how good many is time. this for you? Gosh, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to remember if I've ever missed any. Um, for any reason, but I mean, I already saw I joined the league in '92. '92, yeah. And so I think I went. I think I've been to every one, but I might have missed one for some reason. But I've, I've definitely been to most of them. It's changed quite a bit. I mean, it's gotten a lot bigger. There's so many media now. The SEC basically they they want to be very inclusive and have a lot of people, and and they have all the radio shows come in and do stuff. And so it, it, it's it was a big event in the '90s, but it's really gotten big now. It is a production. That's uh, that we we got the three hogs going. What what are you are you are you interested in just talking with them? Or are you interested in talking with uh, what some other coaches or some other teams? You know, are you inter- is Bobby Petrino going to be there? Uh, Hugh Freeze at Auburn. Who who are you kind of more more interested in talking with? Well, I don't think Bobby's going to be there. It's just it's the head coaches and three players. It used to be two players, but they upgraded to three. And, yeah, we, we stay for the whole time. We basically do a series on every team. Obviously, Arkansas, you know, is a big story there. And you usually get a little extra time with Sam Pittman and the players. But, yeah, it'll be interesting to see Hugh Freeze back in the league. I mean, he was very successful at Ole Miss and then had some off-the-field issues and lost his job. But, you know, there's a lot of coaches that come back into the SEC. You know, Nick Saban's, you know, from uh, LSU, Dolphins now down at Alabama, and you got uh, Lane Kiffin, who was at Tennessee, and I was at Ole Miss, and of course Houston Nutt did Arkansas and Ole Miss. Tommy Tuberville, another Arkansan, did did Ole Miss and Auburn. So I'm mean, definitely interested to, to kind of see about Hugh Freeze. It'll be interesting to ask Jimbo Fisher about like, the dynamic between uh, he and By Petrino, because By Petrino's you know was brought in to fix that offense, which was not very good last year. And you feel like the Aggies have a lot of talent. Talent's usually not an issue for A and M. It's maybe getting that talent to execute the way they should. And you know we all know by Petrino is an elite offensive coach, but Jimbo Fisher's called the plays for a long time. So how's how's that dynamic going to work out? I'm curious about that. You know, 
Georgia's going for the third straight national title. They've had a lot of off the field issues. You know, had tragic car accident that a staffer and a player died in. They've had other issues with speeding, you know, and different things. And you know, to the extent where Kirby, uh, Kirby Smart kind of got out ahead of it and had a meeting with Georgia media earlier this week, probably said in. So when he gets asked about it in Nashville, he can say, I've already talked about that, read these stories or whatever. So there, there, there's always a lot of good, interesting storylines. As you see me today, as I saw this morning with Greg Sank, he just got a contract extension through 2028. He always does kind of a state of a, the SEC and college football address and then takes questions and, you know, with all the things going on with NIL and transfer portal and expansion, there's always some, some things to ask him about. Where do you see? I, I know y'all do a uh, y'all do votes, and, and how do you see Arkansas stacking up in, in the SEC West? This is the last year, I guess, for divisions. Do you think uh, they're going to p- be picked in the in the top half, or, or do you see us probably down there fifth or sixth? You know, it wouldn't surprise me if they're down there fifth or sixth. I probably have. You know, I think every pretty. Much, I don't know what order, but I think pretty much most people are going to put. Alabama and LSU are those top two spots in the West. Some might have one or the other. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I think A&M is going to be pretty good if, if Petrino and, and Jimbo Fisher, you know, can work together. And then I probably would pick Arkansas fourth. Um, but I think, you know, once you get past LSU and Alabama, they're, they're, they're the top teams, I think. That doesn't mean they're going to finish at the top. But after that, when you talk about A&M, Arkansas, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, um, Anybody else in the West? I, I think there, there's not a whole lot of difference, and it really is probably going to come down to who, win, who wins those close games. You look at last year, Arkansas lost a lot of close games and went seven and six the year before. They had a couple really good wins, you know, beating LSU in overtime and hanging on against Mississippi State. Of course, they had a tough loss to Ole Miss two years ago, but 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 the, the, the close games went their way. And I think for a team like Arkansas that has a lot of talent nationally but in the sec you know that there are teams that obviously have more talent than they do so to me for them to have a real good season in the conference they, they got to win those close games bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs get the latest odds lines and matchup reports for baseball boxing golf and more bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action remember to use our promo code believe that's b-l-e-a-v for your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit bet online where the game starts